everyone. We're live at 515. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we have a very fancy guest today. Lauren Molina's here, who's fantastic, who we've seen in all kinds of great things. And uh, she's, of course, part of the Skibbies. Everybody knows the Skibbies. You've watched their YouTube videos, even if you haven't seen their shows, if you're not in New York. But they're every, they go everywhere, right? They go everywhere. But she, right now, she's in Desperate Measures, which is an off-Broadway musical everyone's talking about. It's kind of Shakespearean, but It's not. based on Shakespeare, but it's not Shakespeare, so it's good for me. <laughs> That, that was, I'm just repeating a joke from the silent film version of this show that we just finished. But let's talk about the news. What's going on, Beth? Okay, there's some news. Anthony Edwards, you know him from ER. 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 Dr. Mark Green. He's everybody. a 90s hunk. He's a 90s hunk and a current hunk. He's a four-time Emmy nominee. He has joined the cast of Children of a Lesser God. So he's going to play Mr. Franklin. That's the person who gets together Sarah and James, played by Lauren Ridloff and Joshua. I mean, he gets them together. Oh. Gets them together. I don't want to sound creepy oh. about it. Anyway, and Joshua Jackson plays James. So anyway, he's joined the cast, so that's pretty exciting. Yeah. That begins on March 22nd at Studio 54 and opens on April 11th. Other cast members in the show are Keisha Lewis, Julie Serta, Trichelle Edmond, and John McGinty. Yes. And, of course, directed by Tony winner Kenny Leon. Yes, and this is coming from the Berkshires. It was already a it hit It was in the Berkshires, Berkshires Theater and, Group, yes. Yes, so that's exciting. Uh, everyone has been paying attention to Ben. I mean, Ben Plot is like winding down his run. There's still a month. Calm down. And Dear Evan Hansen, people are like losing their minds. Uh, and Ben Plot today launched this really adorable video with him and Noah Galvin and Taylor Trench, who, of course, the next two uh, Evan Hansen's. We already know the next two because Noah's coming in for a limited run. He starts November 21st. And then Taylor Trench, who's currently in Hello Dolly, is coming sometime in January. We're not sure when. Right? Mid some, January. That's all we know. Sometime in January. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a video of Earth, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire song called "Getaway," and they're in total seventies drag. I say drag, just to mean garb. clothing. It doesn't mean they're in drag. Clothing. They're in yeah. Garb. Garb, if you prefer. <laughs> and you got to watch it because it's hilarious. And Ben Platt is just endlessly adorable. And dancing. Yeah. Synchronized dancing. It's That's great. all you need. That's all you need. Okay, we have some sad news. Yeah. Tony winner Roy Dotrice has passed away. He was 94. He won a Tony Award for A Moon for the Misbegotten. Remember? With I remember. Jerry Jones yeah. in 2000. He played yeah. her father. And he was in a lot of stuff. He, he was on Broadway a lot. Mr. Lincoln, Alive, Kingdoms, Hay Fever, The Homecoming. That was in 1991. Mm -hmm. And he played uh, Mozart's father in Amadeus. And he was on Game of Thrones. So he worked fairly recently. Anyway, we're sad for him. His three daughters and his seven but grandchildren. a full life. A full life and, and a, great, a Tony Award. Great success. And a Tony. Yeah. And a Tony. Uh, Cher, another person we're all talking about. Of course, the Cher show is coming to Broadway in about a year. So calm down. Ish, yeah. Uh, uh, so today, news like kind of leaked. Mm -hmm. how did, it leaked uh, and, and all tweeted the British, and so All forth. the Brits were talking about it first. That she is in Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, which is, of course the sequel to Mamma Mia right. that is being filmed right now. I think they finished most of the filming, but she tweeted something about, they, they didn't, they don't, they're not saying what she's doing. Apparently she's in two numbers. She I've didn't heard. say what role. We don't know the role. Uh, she made a comment about Fernando, which she of tweeted, course is a song. She just wrote Fernando with like a thinking emoji, so hmm. Yes. And, uh, and, <laughs> but, but the fun thing, I'm old enough to know this, you know, Silkwood, hello, Silkwood, anyone? Big 80s movie, if you were around back then. <laughs> Uh, Meryl Streep and Cher were in that together, so yeah, I'm were, wondering what, what, if there's any if they're going to be on screen together because of course this movie jumps back. In Jessica time. Keenan Wynn is of course in it, playing yep. young. One who's of them. the trampy one? Tanya. Tanya. Obviously, young Tanya, <laughs> and uh, we don't know who Cher's playing, but we're super excited. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, we have some photos that you guys should check out on the site. Backstage at a Bronx Hill. Oh, those are those great are gorgeous photos. pictures. Amelia, Amelia Madrid Cooter did a great job on that. Yes, we also have a picture, or a few pictures from the Cats' 500th performance of the revival. Right. And we have our results from the Culturalist Challenge, which was, because Friday was Friday the 13th, we asked you about horror films that should come to Broadway. The top three, should we reveal? Yes, okay. number three. Number three, Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, oh, you remembered. Mm -hmm. Number two, Psycho. Psycho. Yes. And number, and number one, one the Shining. Which I think, isn't there like a Shining musical spoof that Mark Kudish does all the time? I feel all like he did reading like of it. Like he's not busy doing Were you in it, Lauren Molina? I wasn't. I don't know. She's but heard anyway, of it. There is, there is one of the Red Rum, I think it's called. Uh, which reminds me that I watched all of Mindhunter this weekend. Jonathan, Jonathan Groff's Groff. Netflix show about serial killers. 
and it's really good. Like, it really got into it, Sounds and the creepy. ending is spectacular, and Graf is amazing. He gives a really great performance. So I recommend that. Well, that's wonderful. Let's, let's go, and let's get Lauren Molina in here. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Lauren Molina. Go ahead, throw your rocks at me. Baking a pie is easy, if you know how. I'm still standing. If only life were as easy as pie. Waitress is a hit, raised the New York Times, with songs by Grammy-nominated artist Sarah Bareilles, an uplifting celebration of love and laughter. Sugar, butter, flour. On the outside, always looking in, will I ever be more than I've always been? Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass, I'm waving through a window. Hi guys, we are back on Live at Five, and I am now joined by the fabulous, glamorous, the great hair, Lauren Molina. Hello. Hello, how are Hi. you? I'm so good, thanks for good having me. Good to see you, I love, see the, you. I love the outfit. Oh, thanks, a little sparkle never killed anyone. Looking good. Uh, so, how are you doing? I'm having a blast. You're having a blast. I'm, um, I'm feeling very creatively fulfilled in Desperate Measures at the York Theater, because... Okay. It is one of the funniest shows I've ever been a part of. And really? I mean, that's saying a lot. Yeah, yeah. that's saying a lot. It's, yeah. um, you know, you, you were in the original, know. Let's just remind everyone you were in the original Rock of Ages. Rock of cast. Ages. So that, yes. that was funny. That was real funny. That was funny. And, you know, that's all got the Sweeney music. Sweeney Todd, out. not less as, funny. Less funny. Well, I mean, funny, but funny. in a darker way. Right, okay. You know, yeah. and, um, you know, not as slapstick, campy. Right. So this know, is campy, over the top. Over the top. Yes, um, but you know, very clever. So it's um, it's written in contemporary verse and rhyming okay. couplets, which um, sometimes people can be like, "Oh, whoa!" But it's done. I in go, such, "Oh, whoa!" When I hear that. Yes, yeah. exactly. But it's done in such a smart, clever way. Um, the book and lyrics are written by Peter Kellogg, uh -huh. and um, the music is written by um, David Friedman. David Friedman, who has written some of my favorite songs, including to "Listen to My Heart,", to my Heart yes. which yes. which. Lori Beachman used to make me cry. She sang that all the time. So anyway, yes. he, he writes beautiful. He writes beautiful, beautiful music, music and catchy as hell. Yeah. So, um, so that's you know one of the great things about it. It's got clever, catchy tunes, um, and it's uh, it takes place in the Wild West. So, which, is, which is fun. It's always fun. So what are the costumes like? Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm living my best like 80s, um, you know, like glamour shots, but you put in put on Western wear. <laughs> I've that's done that. Like, <laughs> that's like how it feels like to be in these costumes. Or like Westworld. Like I put oh. on my first costume and I'm like, hey girl. Westworld fantasies. I know. I was like, we should backstage make some like sketch comedy of like me being a sexy robot. <laughs> um, because you do a lot of actually back behind the scenes. We've seen you do a lot of sketch comedy and behind the scenes stuff. You're Sort of known for that. Yeah, yeah. With like You're a creative girl. You're always thinking of things like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, I like to keep myself involved. Right. Things. Yes. Anyway, so, um, but yeah, so the costumes are fabulous and um, and it is loosely based on Shakespeare's Measure for Measure, which is known as a problem play. Okay. Is it, is it a comedy? Is it a drama? There's so much. There's is it a Western? Yeah, it is it not. It is not but a Western. <laughs> but, right. It's not a Western. It's a musical but, now. Uh, now, sure. Yeah. So, um, What's the plot? Let's, let's okay, just sort of okay. set it up. Okay. Something to do with uh, trying to defrock a nun, which I think I used the wrong. Isn't there something involved in that? That is, that is true. Okay, yes. so I'll give you the full. There's some exposition to set uh -huh. up the fun part. Okay. So, um, so Johnny Blood is this, you know, young cowboy who is um, set to hang because he was in a bar fight defending his lover, played by moi. Oh, and nice. um, uh, and so he sh he shoots this guy, Big Swede, kills him, and oh. the governor says, "Well, you killed a man, so you are going to hang." And the sheriff, who's a good guy says, okay, Johnny Blood, um, we, are, we know that this is wrong, but who can plead for a pardon for your life? And he says, I don't know, my parents are dead. I think I have an estranged sister somewhere, but I don't know where, he, where she is. Uh -huh. So the sheriff tracks down the sister, who's a nun. She's a nun. Or she's about to become a nun. She's okay. like right oh, about okay. to, like Just on the Just about to, so maybe there's a little flexibility there. Yep, but no spoilers, <laughs> but flexibility. And, um, and so he, the sheriff says, go to the, the corrupt governor and try to plead for Johnny's life. And you know she's very shrewish in typical fashion. Uh -huh. And um, 
So she goes and the governor is smitten with her and says, well, I have to uphold the law. I took an oath to uphold justice. And if I break my oath of justice, you have to break your oath of chastity. Uh, uh, oh, here's mm-hmm. the twist. So it's like the whole thing is like <laughs> it's law versus <clears throat> like what is right isn't necessarily what is like justice versus uh-huh. what is right versus good. Uh-huh. And then so they come up with this scheme. You're a less pure woman in this show, your character. I mean, she represents <laughs> the fun. She's the uh-huh. true hooker with the heart of gold. Okay. Um, but so Pretty they come woman up. woman coming to Broadway next yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not starring me. Um, But uh, so then the twist is the sheriff comes up with an idea that they can agree to the governor Uh and say, yes, she will sleep with you. And in the dark, they will swap out a prostitute or a saloon girl, played by yours truly. With the heart of gold. Uh Mm -hmm. And uh, I will be dressed like a nun. I will learn how to act like a nun. But in the end, I will eventually you know, get the pardon and free my love. Yeah. And um, madness ensues and it's so much fun. And um, so basically it's it's just, a, you know, we all need right now in this world that feels like it's crumbling upon us, um, two hours of just you think? pure yeah. fun. Yeah, maybe some fun. To escape and just have your brain just be tickled. And, uh-huh. um, and people, audiences are leaving with like, you know, telling me their face hurts from smiling, right. how much, like, how thankful they are that we could just make them laugh nonstop. Is, uh, now, is it fun to be so loose and over the top? On st- I mean, I'm thinking of Rock of Ages because yes. you were definitely like that in Rock of What was the name of that woman? What was Regina. The name of that woman? Oh, right. Regina. Yeah. Sorry. Regina. Regina, of course. Yes. That's of right. course, Regina. Uh, yeah, so is it is that sort of a... Are we still on? Are we good? Yeah. Okay, good. My, 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 my feed stopped. But um, if you're telling me Yeah, no, on. so Regina, yes. Yeah. Rock of Ages was some of the best times of my life. I yeah. made my lifetime you were in collaborators. It for how long? I was in it for two and a half years. Right, yeah. And I did the original off Broadway yep. at the New World stages. Mm-hmm. And then um, we went to Broadway, and it was so and much fun. And it was fun. amazing. It was great. And you, st- and you stayed there. Yeah, and I stayed there. And you know all those behind while. the scenes shenanigans. Yep, Rock of Ages Productions, yes. the backstage. Amazing. Yeah, web series. Um, Which kind of like. It inspired so many. It, was it kind inspired of like, kind of everything that happens now. I mean, I if you think know. about like everyone's personal shenanigans on Instagram and you know all I the know. all their own. It really it, was. That was one of the first times the we original, got to see. Yeah, yeah. I give you credit for that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we were really the the pioneers of the mockumentary in the Broadway community. Right. We're still good, right? You know, I think so. The computer says we are live. But Facebook might be saying something else. I'm just going to have a cocktail. <laughs> Got a LaCroix there? No. <laughs> um, Anyone? Anyone? Mm-hmm. Bueller? Have they made Ferris oh, Bueller? We're good. We're good. We're we good. are good. Yeah, we're good. We're good. You see us vamping on, yeah, on, say, on camera? Yeah, we got you. We got All you. right, let's keep talking then. Haley uh, wants to know what your favorite Shakespeare play is. Um, I think Much Ado. Much Ado. Yeah. About nothing. Nothing. Yeah, that's the full. Just like nothing. That's the full title. I just want to make sure everybody knew the full title. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I would say that one. Yeah. Are you a Shakespeare fan? Yeah, yeah. I do. I do love Shakespeare. Okay. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. <laughs> if I can say it right. <laughs> so what's going on with the skivvies? Oh, my God. Thanks for asking. So the skivvies are um, gearing up for a couple shows. Okay. So actually at the York Theater, where Desperate Measures is happening, right. they just asked us to do a post-show concert. So we're now going to do, on Tuesday, October 24th, a post-show, um, skivvies show, using our entire cast and a few extras. Oh. And oh. Um, so that's at 10 p.m. on October 24th. And then we have a giant Halloween bash on October 31st at the Green Room 42 yes. in Yotel. That's sort of like your new home, right? Um, for a minute, yeah. We're yeah. going to bounce back to Joe's Pub for Christmas. We kind of right. we kind of like to mix it up for different price points, for different right. vibes. And um, your, your partner, Nick. Nick Searley. Nick Searley. He's, isn't he in Rocky Horror? He is in Rocky Horror. Sure, right? No, Bucks yeah. County, yeah. Yes. And you did that before, yeah, too. Yeah, I did the original um, now three years ago. Right, and, yeah. It's um, like an annual thing now. Yes. Yeah. And Nick is the, Nick and... Um, Nick Adams are yes. have have done yeah, it. Yeah, and now. Nick Adams is kind of a skivvies regular Absolutely. because he we've is. seen him in his skivvies often. He, is. Um, he looks like 
a fake person. Yeah, he does look like a fake person. I mean, his muscles. Um, but and he's, pause. You know, enough about Nick Adams. We all know. You look pretty phenomenal. I oh, mean, you. Thanks. I mean, like, I, I actually, when you started this, I thought, oh, the, the concept is that you're in performing in your undies. Yeah, we're stripping and, down the music and, you're bringing, and we're stripping down our stripping clothes. down the music and stripping down the Broadway stars. Correct. And you're bringing guest stars in, and everyone appears in their skivvies. Yeah. And um, you look phenomenal, but I feel like it was just sort of like a secret way to show everyone what an amazing body you had. Oh, thanks. Like, yeah, I'm a good singer and musician, but you know, look how good I look. It kind of was just one of those things where I kept getting cast in roles where I had to take my clothes off, and so I became really comfortable on stage. <laughs> and it's interesting because growing up, I was actually pretty self-conscious. Yeah. And um, I remember coming off the... So when I finished the Sweeney Todd tour, and I my first audition back was for... Rock of Ages, mm. and miraculously, wow. it worked out. Amazing. And um, I remember very soon after that, I uh, was getting a costume fitting, and I doubled as Regina and a stripper in the club. Of course, because you need extra strippers and for I, that scene. Yes, yeah, so naturally. <laughs> and um, so the uh, Gregory Gale costume designer yes. gave me um, you know, a little pink push-up bra, some tall, tall, tall patent leather orange boots, and a pink thong. And I was like, uh, you've seen my juicy butt? Like, it's, <laughs> it's gonna swallow that. And he's like, I know. That's why we're putting you in it. And so I, but I used to be like very self-conscious of my butt. And now I embrace it. And we know that some juice is good. And we can say like, curves are good. So now you feel like really confident and like has it, I mean, this, it just must have made you so na natural for you. Yeah, you know, the other day, um, uh, I, I was talking to Seth Rudetsky, and mm -hmm. he was like, you know, there's got to be a shelf life on this, right? And I was like, well, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, you know, we've talked about that, but, you know, Nick Searly thinks it would be really funny if we were still doing it in our 80s. Yeah, as I love that. Octogenarians yes. in a nursing home. Yes. Just with our ukuleles. Absolutely. You know, and maybe, maybe like an extra layer of like a bathrobe. But like, yeah. <laughs> it's all about the music. Truly, the skivvies are, yeah. um, are a state of mind. Mm -hmm. It's all about the fun, the music, the arrangements, the creativity of how we put the songs together. Um, you know, like, so we're organizing our show for Halloween right. and uh, we just had rehearsal and um, Travis Kent came over and we're doing a whole Friday medley so he's gonna come out with the Friday the 13th mask nice. but then we're gonna mash up like Rebecca Black Friday <laughs> yeah. Friday gonna yeah. get down on Friday with like Friday I'm in love with last Friday night by Katy Perry wow. and um, and uh, it's just like they write themselves Who and comes up with all those you, we do we you do guys and really then like just yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and then like Psycho Killer, Kiss Kiss Say, like, you wow. know, just, he's going to obviously have a giant machete that, <laughs> you know, props galore. Anyway, so, yeah, we have fun with the skivvies, and what's so great being an actor is, you know, you have so many ups and downs in your career. Right. You have um, a roller coaster of highs and lows, and uh, it's hard to have just a consistent thing mm -hmm. and being in charge of your own world and in control of your own work yep. is so refreshing and if you can create something especially with your friends that um that just stimulates you creatively mm -hmm. and that you can have a passion for it really like it will sustain you as a performer so i feel very very lucky that i've got skivvies i've got you know just the opportunity to to make music with mm -hmm. my friends in a really fun capacity. You must tell young performers that all the time. I that mean, is that's my sort of biggest like piece of advice. Yeah. Yeah. Do your thing. Don't try to be anything mm -hmm. else. Like, find out what makes you you and create content. Right. Just really go for it. Yeah. And who cares? Who's, nobody's, if, if it sucks, delete it, you know? Right. Just yeah. try. Yeah. Um, you'll never know if you don't. So. Favorite Skivvy's moment? Do you have one? Oh gosh, I mean, so many. I mean, a lot of amazing people. So many. I will say, like, there was one time we did this um, radioactive with Lena Hall, uh -huh. where we wore gas masks, and <laughs> um, I don't know if you've heard Lena Hall's voice, but it is, it's, it's like, sometimes when she she belts very high, <clears throat> it's like just it reverberates through you, and. Um, 
she, we were like in these sweaty, um, <laughs> you know, we were like naked, sweaty in, in these gas masks. And, and she just started belting her face off and we're like headbanging and she started walking through the, on the tables of 54 below, just like didn't give two <laughs> shits, just like went for it. And, um, and it was just like an out of body experience uh-huh. where the audience was like, it was felt like a rock concert at 54 below right. and everyone just got up in um, you know, for you know, the it was a major moment. A major moment, yeah. yeah. It was people have a blast epic. at your shows. I mean, you've yeah. really created a thing. How many years has it been now? Five. Five years. Five years. Awesome. Yeah, but you know, we've had Laura Benanti is a favorite always. Yeah. Um, Morgan James, mm-hmm. um, Alice Ripley, right. Leslie Margarita. Right. You know, those are we have some yeah. all stars. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your uh, what's your like dream? Hmm. Like well, if someone's gonna hand you a dream role or a dream, like or I don't know, a project. What would what would it be? Well, what I would love to do, and I am figuring out because I'm constantly writing. Um, but you know, what, as a performer, I'm just like always balancing skivvies and theater. Mm-hmm. And so um, I would love for the skivvies to have a TV show Ooh. in the world of Broad City mi- mixed with like Flight of the Concords. Uh-huh. So I'm kind of like writing that right wow. now. Wow! So and you can have performance moments and then real life moments. Yes, and but uh, you know, mixing real things that have happened to us with you know heightened reality. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would love to do that. Uh, I would love to, you know, break more into TV and film. But my my dream would be to create it yeah. with my friends. And then, um, but like dream roles on Broadway, you know, you always say like they haven't been written. Right now, I feel like I'm in a dream role. Um, it's running. It just got extended. Um, what is it? Through October. October 29th. They're talking about an additional extension and then transferring it. We're making a cast album. Cool. So it's like, you know, if that could blow up, it, it totally should. It's so deserving um but you know there's so many great parts out there i would love to do um dot and sunday that's mm. a dream role mm-hmm. um i was it nothing is confirmed but uh but like next summer i was asked to do charlottesville opera um into the woods to play the witch and i'm, I'm like feeling a little young but at the same time i will transform honey <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah so, yeah, yeah. so that's also a dream role. Yeah, cool. Um, and one day, yeah. when I, in like 20 years, I'll, I think uh, I'd love to do Love It. Ooh. Full circle. How was, how was it working with Lapone? I, mean, I know everyone's asked you that all the time. The, the yeah. Patty Lapone, Michael Cerberus production. Yeah, yeah. Patty Lapone. Um, you know what? She is a force of nature. She told me on the first day of rehearsal when we were all playing our instruments and singing and acting she was like Lauren just so you know it's all downhill from here (laughs) she's like I've been in this business a long time and it doesn't get any better than this so I'm really sorry that this is your Broadway debut because it's all downhill um so that was a nice uh piece of advice right (laughs) um but she's very generous, yeah, and yeah. Um, what I, I love to tell this story. She, she, um, you know, she can be feisty at times, and yeah. you know, everyone gets in their moods. Um, but uh, she once had her dresser um, summon me, and I was like, "Oh, I hope this is good. I hope this is. I'm not in trouble or anything. You never <laughs> know." So she summoned me, and I came up to her dressing room, and she was like. Lauren, I just sang at a concert last night, and uh, who am I doing now? I feel like that was a little Barbara Streisand. I like it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, she was like, I just I wore these Manola, Manola Blahniks last night, and they're just like too small for my feet. So, do you want them? And I was like, uh, Yes, thank you. I'll take your Manola Blahniks. <laughs> I don't care if they fit my foot. I will. I will Cinderella that shit right in. <laughs> or stepsister, I mean. <laughs> Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm swearing a tiny bit. That's all right. This is not TV, TV. No, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> so Desperate Measures. Desperate I Measures. I need to go see it. It's yes. at the York for a few more weeks. Yeah. Pe- pay attention. Maybe it's going to get extended further, but definitely through the 29th. And what's the night of the Skivvies benefit? Um, so or the, the Skivvies concert? Skivvies concert. So you're getting I'm, basically the cast of your show. Yeah, that's October 24th. And then a giant concert for on Halloween, Halloween on Halloween at the Yotel's Green Room 42. Great, which is a cool space. You guys should check it out. I've been there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I, I'm so happy to see you. Great to see you. I love that you have so much going on. 
It's I, fun. I mean, like, and tonight, I, tonight, if you're not doing anything, I'm going to be at Merkin Hall singing for a benefit called Broadway's Got Guts, which um, benefits the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. And, you know, it's just kind of crazy. I feel like people have donation fatigue. It's like every yeah. everything is just needing help and we're crumbling. But it's a great organization. And I have friends with the disease. And, mm. you know, it's hard to live with. So, um if you don't have anything to do tonight, come on by. Merkin Hall begins at 7. Fantastic. Yeah. Look at you, staying busy. Whenever I think of you, I just think she's busy. She's doing like 18 <laughs> things. So. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing, including coming by here. So thank you so no, much. For, thank you. Thank you for squeezing us in. Yay. Uh, everyone check out Desperate Measures at the York and then all the Skivvies. And they can go on the Skivvies website. Yeah, yeah, totally. To keep up with all their concerts. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.